And welcome to another edition of Coffee with Graham here on Amateur Sports TV with your host, Graham Forsyth. And heck of a weekend. Happy to be back. Uh, it's about just after 10 a.m. It's 10.13 here uh, in Winnipeg. And today we're talking to a college commit committed to Northland College. His name is Cole, Pro Co- Cole, Cole Kirkup. Sorry. Uh, just stumbling my words here, a bit tired, but uh, we're going to power through this, and we're uh, joined by Cole here today. So, Cole, how's it going, buddy? I'm pretty good. Thanks for having me on, Graham. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem, man. And uh, big news, you signed with Northland College on May 31st, and uh, heck of a heck of an accomplishment, uh, taking your hockey career to uh, college hockey. That's really awesome to see. So, my first question is, why? Northland College, why did you decide to sign there? Um, Northland kind of approached me a little bit later in the year, and um, kind of that's when the ball started to get rolling. And Northland, for me, I just kind of wanted to find the right fit for me. I've been moved around a couple times in the last couple years, so I kind of wanted a place where I could call home. And schedule-wise, so it looks pretty good for me, and obviously a great hockey program that they have get going down there so i'm really excited to get down there right on right on and uh what will you be studying while you're down there i'm gonna take education nice and is education something you've always kind of wanted to take or is it something that's really appealed to you as of late in your life i think as of late i had a i was fortunate enough to live with a bunch of kids during my time playing junior as billet brothers billet sisters so i've been around kids quite a bit and i've always uh, volunteered at Cansgate and stuff like that. So I enjoy being around kids and I think I make an okay teacher. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's awesome. You're doing something that uh, you enjoy studying something that you enjoy. That's awesome. So you're, uh, you said you've been moved around quite a bit. You've played for a number of teams in the past year, one of them being Humboldt, one of them being uh, the Valley Wildcats and you played for Winkler as well. But what are uh, what are some things you're looking to work on going into uh, co- the college season? Um, obviously, you're trying to get better in every aspect. Um, staying in shape is a big thing, especially now. It's nice that the gyms are back open so you can get back into that routine. But I think just my all-around game, you're always looking to improve and what can get you to the next level and what you can do better to get you that extra shift or that extra ice time just down the road. So I think in all aspects i'm trying to prove all around nice nice and how do you think your game will translate to the college level because we know college hockey it's it's a different beast than uh junior hockey for sure the the crowd is there's a lot more people in the stands probably and uh yeah it's just a different beast all around so how do you think your game will translate to the college level to that next level yeah for sure i think it'll translate okay obviously i'm going to be considered a younger guy now that it's my freshman year coming from where you were the older guy back in junior so obviously you're playing against men that could be up to 25 years old so they're going to be physically mature bigger and stronger so i think my game will translate very well i uh i play a heavy game i try to use my physicality to my advantage and then hopefully some offense translate out of that as well Nice. And you talked about how you've kind of been the older guy on uh, on teams that you've played on as of late. So do you think that those experiences, being the older guy, being a leader as well, will uh, help you kind of settle into the college atmosphere? Yeah, for sure. Um, I was given a lot of responsibility this year, especially wearing a letter to try and help the young guys and keep them focused and ready for junior hockey. So I think I took a lot of pride in that. Obviously, I was good to everybody in the room and wanted to make everybody feel welcome, but I was also able to be hard on guys at times too. So I think if I find that balance, it'll help me quite a bit. Nice, nice. And you talked about how you're planning to go to work in the gym this off season. Is there anything that you're looking to improve upon, whether it's strength or just your agility or whatever it might be? I think uh, I want to lose a little bit of weight, obviously, kind of quarantine kind of got the best of me, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, I think foot speed's a big thing for me, my first step quickness, and then just trying to get a little bit quicker so I can get a little more separation. Nice. And have you been training at all during this quarantine before before the gyms have opened up? 
Yeah, I was uh, running quite a bit just because that's kind of what we had available. And then I had, I have a bar and a couple sets of weights down in my basement too. So I tried to, my brother and I tried to stay active as much as we could. Nice. And um, I've asked this question a lot to guests that we've had on this show. It's it's different working out at home, whether other than working out in the gym, it's two different things. You don't got that. You might not have that guy pushing you, but how have you found the adjustment to working out at home compared to working out at the gym? Um, obviously it's been a change, but it's nice having my brother there as well. We kind of push each other and that's good for the competition aspect, but yeah, just doing different things. It's more body weight and kind of foot speed kind of stuff, just cause you don't have the access to as much weights, but during the start of the, your training process, you're not supposed to be using much weights anyway. So it's been good in that aspect. And yeah, if I didn't have my brother, it'd be kind of hard to get self-motivated. Yeah, it's really nice to have that guy to kind of push you along. It's uh, it's hard to get motivated. I know that when it's kind of just you, uh, it's it takes a lot of discipline, and it's nice to have that guy there to push you for sure. Uh, any plans playing hockey after college, or is this your final stand, you'd say? Um, Obviously, I'd be open to anything. I kind of just want to get down there and get my feet wet my first year and then see how everything I and I adapt to everything down there. So obviously, I'd love to keep playing for as long as I can. But I think I'm just going to take it slow and one year at a time right now. And is there a personal goal for you personally that you have going into your first college season? Uh, I just want to make an impact. I want to help the team win in every which way possible. Uh, whatever role I'm placed in. If they need me to score, I'll try my best to score. If they need me to shut down the other team's top line, I'm totally willing to do that too. So whatever is going to help the team win at the end of the day. Awesome, awesome. So I'm going to uh, go a bit further back into your hockey career. Uh, I saw on uh, EliteProspects.com that you played for the Southwest Cougars uh, way back when. So how was that whole experience playing with Southwest just in, uh, in a pretty high skill league? I was good. I played uh, Bantam with Southwest. I played two years with that program, and that's kind of when the Bantam Rural AAA started to kind of take off. So I played two years there, and I really enjoyed it. I had great coaches both years. Um, they really helped me, pushed me to the next level. So I have nothing bad to say about the Southwest program. Nice. And in that first year, were you getting a lot of ice time, or how, how was the ice time like in that first year? Uh, it wasn't too bad. Obviously, as a younger guy, you're going to play your older guys, which is understandable. But I think the same thing. I was just kind of getting my feet wet and then really preparing for the next year. Nice. And how was that team dynamic that year? Because, uh, we, you know, there, there could be a lot of talent on any team, but if the, if the chemistry isn't there, there's not a whole lot to work with. So how was that whole team dynamic that season? Uh, it was really good. Uh, we kind of struggled during the regular season, but once we hit that provincial tournament, we, had, we were seeded eighth, I think, and then we lost in double over, triple overtime, double overtime in the final, the Interlake. So throughout the year, we really built some team chemistry, and then during the playoffs or provincial tournament, you could really see it come around. Nice, nice. And how were the practices like? Because uh, there, there's pro there were probably a lot of practices, I'm assuming, but was the workload heavy? Was it something you could handle or was it, uh, was it uh, tough to handle with all the practices? Uh, it was definitely adjustment at the beginning, just going from minor hockey to a AAA program. Obviously, it's going to be different, but practices were really good. Uh, high pace, high tempo. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of flow, so it was definitely adjustment with the faster play, but I think I figured it out pretty quickly. Yeah, and looking at your stats, you played 32 games that season, put up 14 goals, 15 assists for a total of 29 points. Was that uh, was the success you had that season kind of the success as it came along, or was it just right off the bat you were uh, you were making an impact? Uh, obviously, I think it was more later in the year that I kind of find my stride a little bit. Um, I obviously, I, I was playing with two great line mates, so that helped tremendously. They got me the puck and I was able to get them the puck. So, yeah, I think we had a pretty good chemistry there and we found figured things out. Nice. And what would you say your role was on that line? Were you, uh, were you the uh, big bruiser? Were you the... Uh 
more of the goal scorer, more of the setup man. I'm not that big, but I like to think I am. But I don't know. I think it was all around a little bit of everything. It kind of depends on the game and how you're feeling, right? You got to adjust to whatever. Say you don't have your legs one night, then you're going to try and make a difference the other way if it's putting someone through a wall. But if your legs are going, then you're going to be going hard to the net and trying to get create some offense as well. And how was the off-ice training like that season? Did they have you guys on any special training uh, training programs or was it kind of at your, at your own leisure? I think they put a lot of trust in us to work out on our own, but we did have a trainer with our team that season. I think we saw her once or twice a week, a night before practice. So we did that, and then, yeah, they took pretty good care of us that way. Nice. And this this was obviously really, really early in your hockey career playing for Southwest, but how is how was your style of game back then? My style of game? Um, I thought I was the best player, but that wasn't <laughs> it, of course. But, you know, we had a really good team, and then I kind of fit into that second line. I could score. I could do that kind of stuff, but I could also play that heavy game like we've talked about before. So I think – all around that really helped me awesome awesome and then you moved on to play with the notre dame hounds for about two seasons if i'm not mistaken yeah two seasons a midget and then one a junior nice so in that first season how was that adjustment adjusting to that new environment uh obviously different again uh moving away for the first time you're on your own so you got to grow up quite a bit that first year but uh, hockey-wise, it was really good. I had a great coach in Del Pedrick for both my years in midget, actually. And, yeah, it really helped me a lot. Really took my game to the next level and it's instilled a lot of confidence in myself. And you talked about that adjustment. How long did it take to really adjust and get your feet under you in that first season? Uh, well, with Notre Dame, it's kind of the first month, month and a bit, the teams are still kind of being made. It's a long process. So I think once you're on a team and you know where you're going to sit, then you get a lot more comfortable just with the camaraderie of the guys. Like you got some new friends and stuff like that. So that's when you start to build your really your team chemistry there. That's great. That's great. And uh, the league was based in Saskatchewan, I'm assuming. Yeah, Saskatchewan. Yeah. League. So you're from Surrey, Manitoba. How How is that um, adjustment, just moving away from home, moving away from family? How is that? How did you take that that first year? Uh, it was obviously tough. I was still 14 when I moved, so I was still pretty young. But um, my parents and the support system I had made it really easy for me. And then once I got my feet wet, feet wet I fell in love with that place and didn't want to leave. Nice. And do you think that moving away from home at such a young age, like 14, moving away from home to pursue something like like a sport or anything in general, uh, do you think that it's kind of built your character throughout the years, just getting that experience to kind of uh, move away from home, moving away from mom and dad? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, obviously, it forces you to grow up a little early than expected and get some independence for yourself. Um if you're they're pretty on top of you there like you got to manage your schoolwork your hockey your off ice all that kind of stuff as well as extra extracurricular activities so there it really helped me manage my time and uh yeah really helped me out that way and were there any mentors that you looked up to in that first year being with notre dame uh definitely there was a kid on my team rhett kingston that uh he kind of had the short end of the stick for a couple of years there, and uh, he really turned it on in his grade 12 year and then ended up playing junior, and now he plays Division One for Western Michigan. So I just think with his work ethic and what he did, uh, it really helped me a lot, and he was one of my best friends. And would you say that Rhett having the work ethic he did, uh, really battling through adversity, kind of taught you to battle through adversity and just to put in the work? Definitely, yes. Nice, nice. And uh, obviously, playing playing for the Notre Dame Hounds, it's it's a big accomplishment. They they play in a pretty high high skilled league. Were there any uh, negatives at all in that first year? Uh, I wouldn't say any negatives. Obviously, some adversity with just ice time and stuff like that. Again, being a young guy, but I think no neg. 
I wouldn't really say they were negatives, just learning experiences. And what would you say were the, the biggest positives, the biggest positive takeaways from that first year? I think just being on the ice every day and in the gym every day. We practiced every day for about an hour, hour and a bit. So that was nice. That was obviously different coming from Bantam and then a rural program is where you're not access to ice every single day. So we had ice every day. They just built a new skill center when I was there as well. So you have off ice component as well as a brand new gym. So it's been really good and really good for my development. Well, that's awesome. Uh, just doing something you love at such a young age. That, that's awesome to see. So we're going to take our first commercial break here on the show. We're going to hear from our lovely sponsors here on the network. But Cole, stay with us, buddy. We'll be back with you in uh, about 10 seconds. Kirk up joining us here on the network and Cole just signed with, uh, well, he didn't just sign, but he signed a while ago. And uh, I believe it was May 31st with the Northland, uh, Northland college of division three hockey and uh, NCAA. And we were just talking about why he signed with Northland college. And we were talking about a bit of his, uh, a bit of his time in his early career in hockey as well. So we were talking about the Notre Dame hounds or time there, uh, before the break, and I just want to get into your second season with them there. And wow, you guys went on that championship run. How was that experience in that second year, just going on that championship run? Yeah, it was pretty crazy because, to be honest with you, with the roster we had the year before, we were 10 times better the year before on paper. But yeah, we were young our second year. There was a lot of grade 11, grade, grade 10 students, but um we weren't obviously the most skilled team or the best team in the league but uh we just found a way to win when it mattered like we went down 0-2 first round to Yorkton won three straight and then beat the best team in the league in the sec second round and then ended up taking Tisdale to game five in the finals and winning it so that team was really fun and a great year and really really fun to be a part of nice and would you say that team chemistry was one of the biggest factors to why you guys were so successful because you talked about it, you guys weren't as skilled that year as you were the year before but we all know that if you have if you have the right mindset you can you can do just about anything so is team chemistry uh one of the biggest reasons why you guys were so successful uh definitely i think so at notre dame you're you're with your team 24 seven, basically you have class with them, you eat with them, you're hanging out in their room with them. You could be roommates with them. So you're with the guys pretty much all day, every day. So you really build a personal bond rather than just a teammate bond. So it's really good team chemistry for sure. Awesome. And you got an A in the second season. How is that like being, uh, being called upon to be one of the leaders of the team? Uh, definitely adjustment again. Uh, there's a little more pressure that comes with it and then obviously a lot of accountability. So you want to day in, day out, you want to show the young guys and then the team around you that you're going to, you're going to do the extra work. So why can't they do it? So just leading by example and then using my voice in the room as well. And you felt as the season went along that you were up to that task of being a leader. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. So you guys had a disappointing end to your uh, first season in Notre Dame. What kind of off-season work went into uh, preparing for that next season? Because your numbers went up. Uh, you got a point boost that season, too. And obviously, you guys won the championships. So what was uh, was the off-season like that year? Yeah, obviously, I put in a lot of work just to try and uh, get better, as just like every other summer. But yeah, that summer was really good for me. And I kind of came in with a chip on my shoulder into tryouts again, just with the way things ended the year before. Uh, we wanted the guys that were coming back, wanted to rewrite that script and make a run for it. 
And was there anything in your game that off season that you really improved upon? I think just my skating. I wasn't the best skater growing up, but again, going back to being on the ice every day and skill sessions and stuff like that, that uh, I think my skating really kind of took me to that next level a little more. Nice. So when you talk about improving your skating, was it edge work that you improved on? Was it uh, the power in your stride? What exactly was the, the biggest thing you worked on to improve your skating? I think it was just a lot more power in my stride as well as first step quickness. Uh, the faster you can get going, the better off you're going to be. So I think just working on that and then overall speed really helped me out. And uh, besides your skating, what were the other biggest improvements you saw throughout that season? I think my passing really came along um, and just my vision on the ice. Uh, I was able to make some passes that I couldn't have made the year before and seeing guys that were open that I wouldn't have seen the year before. So I think just that and being more of a student of the game. And was there any uh, any extra work you'd put in at practices to get better that season? Uh, I'm not too sure off the top of my head. Uh, we usually got kicked off the ice as soon as our slot was up just because another team was coming on. But, yeah, yeah if, there was, if there was extra ice, a couple of us would stay on and mess around for a little bit, just trying some stuff out. So, so you, you touched a bit about uh, the playoff run you guys had that season. You guys came out with the championship. Just uh, take me through that whole playoff run. Uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. We were we ended up finishing fourth in, overall in the league, so we matched up with Yorkton first round. Um, yeah, and that was the first round was crazy. We went down 0-2 pretty quick, and then switched goaltenders, and then we kind of went on a run, just a new change of scenery and ended up winning three straight there to get us to the second round against Regina, who was, I think they finished. Yeah, they would have finished first. Um, but yeah, ended up beating them three straight to get us to the finals. And then Tisdale who finished second or third. Yeah. We went to five with them and it was a pretty packed barn and pretty crazy game five up in Tisdale. And was that something you guys have ever experienced before with the pack bar and all that pressure on you guys? Is that something that uh, you kind of thrived on? Uh, I've personally never played in front of a crowd like that before. But, yeah, it was definitely – we had about – I think we had two charter buses bring up a bunch of students. So we were – our presence was there just as much as Tisdale's was, and they really pushed us, and it was a crazy night. Awesome. And what was your fa – what would you say your – Obviously, a lot of great moments in that playoff run. Uh, as you talked about, you guys uh, beat some of the best teams in the league. But what was what would you say was your favorite uh, moment in the playoffs? Uh, I think game three against Regina, I scored a shorthanded goal, and it ended up being the winner. We won one nothing, and then as soon as we got through Regina, I think the whole team knew that we could actually do this. Awesome. And uh, you put up a, a heck of a stat line in, uh, in that whole playoffs, 12 points in 13 games, uh, one of the leading scorers on your team. So was it, uh, was it big for your confidence really being able to know that, hey, I'm a playoff performer here, uh, I was able to get it done? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was obviously playing with two great line mates at the time um, that really helped me and that was kind of our role in the playoffs. We uh, we were asked upon to create some offense. So, yeah, that definitely helped. And that's what kind of ended up with me playing junior the next year after my playoff run. Awesome. And you moved on to the Winkler Flyers in the next season, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I went to Notre Dame again. Oh, Notre Dame after again. My, oh. my first year junior there, yeah. Awesome. So how was that first year playing junior with Notre Dame? Uh, very good. We had a great locker room. Um, I ended up only playing half the year. I separated my shoulder in, at the middle end of January. So I missed about three months, and then I think I came back for two playoff games. But, yeah, obviously an adjustment again. You're playing against 20-year-old men that are physically mature, uh, very strong. And, yeah, it's definitely an adjustment. And uh, injuries, always a killer. How Was it something you've dealt with before? Have you ever had any big injuries before that season? 
Uh, not to that extent. That was kind of my first one. And then obviously faced with some adversity, but I uh, tried to rehab it as quick and best as I could to get back as soon as I could. And how was that whole experience going through rehab in it? Was there times where you, uh, where you were down on yourself or were you positive throughout the whole experience of rehabbing? Um, obviously I think you want to try to stay positive throughout as much as you can, but there's going to be those days where it's, you see the team on the ice and it's like, Oh, why can't I be out there? Like, that's all I want to do. So obviously you're going to have your bad days every once in a while, but, uh, as long as you have a good group of guys around you and a good support support staff, I think things go pretty well. And it seemed like you did have a pretty great support staff around you. So going into your first year of junior hockey, how was, uh, how was the the team chemistry going in? Were the guys open to accepting you? Was it uh how how's that experience coming in as the new guy? Uh very good. Obviously the old guys are gonna give you a hard time and grill you about some stuff. Yeah. But that's their that's how they welcome you, I guess you could say. Obviously a little bit of ribbing and joking around here and there. That's how you get welcomed to the team. So yeah, I our eight 20 year olds that we had were unbelievable to me as well as every other veteran and every other guy in that room is uh, the, the experiences you had in that first year playing junior hockey with uh, Notre Dame, was that something, did it give you the tools to kind of build upon uh, your career to the point that you're at now? Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously uh, the program up there is great. Um, yeah, I enjoyed my time up there and it definitely helped lead to where I am today. Awesome. And then you, uh, I know you played for Winkler, but you actually played for the humbled Broncos as well. And we all know with uh, the devastating bus crash that happened, the year it happened was just brutal. It, it shook the hockey world. It, it shook me to the core as well. It's just something, something you don't really think of when you're, because when uh, when you're on a hockey team, the the likelihood of you being on a bus is is it's a pretty uh, it's a pretty big possibility, and you don't really think of this tragedy happening. So, what was uh, what was the decision to really join Humboldt after that tragic season that happened? To them? Uh, well, yeah, obviously that was a pretty crazy time in the hockey world that could have that could have been anybody who stepped on the bus yeah. that day right yeah. so obviously pretty crazy but yeah i ended up getting traded to humboldt and i think it was around the middle end of october so yeah ken pearson called me in his office told me what was going on and then nathan oystrick the head coach called me right away and was really excited to have me and welcome me to the team so i uh drove up there that night actually and uh, got saddled and then met the team in the morning. So it was a pretty easy transition for, for me personally. And, yeah, I was super excited to go up there. Nice. And uh, I read an article the other day. I forget I forget exactly what article it was. But uh, you met some fans uh, of Humble, John Kerbrat and his wife, Helene. So how was that whole experience meeting those people? Uh, it was definitely very cool. Uh, John was, I don't think he missed a Bronco game in about 40 years and he got ill, unfortunately. So at the beginning of camp last year, Grayson Cameron, one of the guys that was in the bus crash, he came back and played. So our, one of our team reps asked if we could bring a stick and go see him just cause he wasn't very well. And so we did that. We saw him a couple times and then unfortunately he ended up passing about a week after. So it was good to see him and the family before, and you could tell that he was just super happy to see some of his Broncos. And yeah, he was a great man, and he loved the game of hockey and Humboldt. So sad to he'll be missed for sure, but uh, he'll never be forgotten. Yeah, for sure, and that that's great to see you. You left an impact on a on a lifelong Broncos fan. That's awesome to see. And do you still talk? Are you still in touch with uh, his other family members to this day? Uh, I'm not in touch with his other families. No, no, yeah, but but awesome for you, man. Just uh, just a great experience, I'm sure. What was uh, so humble? Just a big year after the whole uh, devastation of what happened there. How would you say you grew throughout those experiences you had that season? I think I grew immensely. 
Um, obviously, it's uh, it was a different scenario just with any other year. You had more to play for than just the game. Like you had 16 or the 29 all involved. You were playing for them every single night. And I think that's what our coach instilled for us. And then the guys who were in the crash instilled into us too. It's like, it's more than just a game. Obviously we want to go out in there and win, but just play hard, give it all every night. And then we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, for sure. Well, Cole, it's been great talking with you today on the network and thanks for joining us. I wish you all the best in your first season of college hockey. Uh, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on you this season and hopefully we get to have you back on the show sometime uh, later in the future. So Cole, thanks for joining us today and you take care, buddy. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Graham. Yeah, no problem, man. Take care. And that's Cole Kirkup of the Northland of Northland College um joining us on the show today and awesome to talk to cole and just a touching story about uh him meeting john kerbrad and his wife helene and just just a very very humble guy and uh it, it's great to see it it's great to see humble athletes out here and that's going to do for another episode of coffee with graham here on amateur sports tv and once again thanks to everyone who's been supporting the show so far throughout uh throughout um this whole COVID-19 pandemic. It's, it's been awesome for, uh, for us to be getting viewers out here. And it's awesome for, uh, that people are enjoying the show and I'm stumbling my words that I, I do that a lot. I butcher these outros all the time, but yeah, thanks again to everyone who's been supporting the show. The show is growing and it's really awesome to see. And we hope everyone is staying safe out there in this trying time. Uh, COVID-19 is still a thing. So stay safe, stay home. And once again, thanks to our supportive sponsors. Like we can't thank you guys enough for supporting the show and your support means the most. And, uh, we got some other great shows on the network other than coffee with Graham. So if you guys want to check those out, check out, check us out on Facebook, on Instagram at amateur sports TV, and you can check out when shows are coming out and, uh, yeah, you will be able to check out when this one is coming out soon. I'm sure. And for, uh, everyone at amateur sports TV, we thank you guys for tuning in today. And once again, I've been your host, Graham Forsyth on coffee with Graham. And until next time, grab your cup of joe, sit back and relax, and enjoy the show. See you guys next time. Peace.